Okay, so here we are. We are talking about half-lives. And uh, a half-life is the amount of time it takes for one half of a sample to decay. And it is decaying because it is looking to become more stable. I'm sorry, my dog was crying. I had to give him a yogurt container. Um, so he's in the background making noise again. I apologize. So I think the best way to teach half-lives is just by example. So that's what I'm going to do here. Um, on the left side of my screen, I have a question. And it says, in the past, some paints that glowed in the dark contained zinc sulfide and salts of radium-226. As the radioisotope-226 decayed, the energy released caused the zinc sulfide in these paints to emit light. The half-lives for uranium-226 radium and two other radioisotopes used in the paints are listed on the table below. The first question is, what fraction of the original radium-228 sample remains unchanged after 17.4 years? So this is how you do a half-life question. It's stuff over time. Go with me. We need to figure out how much stuff is still radioactive after 17.4 years. This is how we set it up. We are also going to need a reference table here. We draw a line. And in this case, the stuff needs to be written as a fraction. So in this case, it will be fraction over time. When this stuff is decaying, I'm going to start the clock. Boom. When you start a timer, the timer starts at zero. Oops. Where did the zero go? Okay, so we have zero. And we have 100% of our radium sample. We have all of it. The fraction for all of it is one over one. Now the question is, what is the half-life of radium-228? Well, that information can be found in the reference tables on table N. Yes, N. In table N, where is the slider? Boop -a -doop. In our radioisotopes thing, we have um, all of these elements, radioisotopes. We have both the name of it and its um, symbol. And then we have a half-life and we have the decay mode. So we are looking specifically at radium-228. Radium-228 is not on this list because the half-life is on this table. I'm kind of dumb, but we're going to go with it because we're here. So um, everybody's half-life is a little bit different. It depends individually on the ratio of protons to neutrons. It depends on... Um, why this particular atom is unstable, everything is a little bit different, and the radiation decay mode, all the way back from the decay mode lesson, those things are going to change as well. So um, we see here on this table that radium-228 has a half-life of 5.8 years, meaning after 5.8 years have passed, half of the sample has decayed. So if we go back here, um, after... 5.8 years, Y stands for years, um, we will have half of the sample will still be radioactive. You with me? Now, it's going to be another 5.8 years for what's left over to decay some more. So I need a calculator because my brain can't do math. We are at 11.6 years. And in 11.6 years, we will have one quarter of the sample still radioactive. Now in another 5.8 years, it will be 17.4 years. And then we will have half of this left, which would be one eighth. So from the original sample, after 17.4 years, approximately one eighth of the sample 
will still be radioactive and the rest of it will have decayed into something else. You with me? I know it's hard to follow. I think it's just something that you get with practice. Remember the half-life is the amount of time it takes for half the sample to decay and that's why the stuff gets cut in half each time. And on the time, we are just going to add the half-life starting with zero. Um, you may remember this from earth science as well. I know a lot of um, earth science teachers do this with um, like geological dating. So the next question is, complete the following equation for the beta decay of, um, that's not even a half-life question, so we're going to skip that for now. And number three says, explain in terms of half-lives why radium-226 may have been used more often than the other isotopes in these paints. So the question is, why is radium-228 preferred over these guys? So um, PM... I think is praseodymium. I don't remember. Its half-life is 2.6 years, specifically number 147. Um, and then Y stands for years. Radium 226 is 1,599 years. And then we have radium 228, whose half-life is only 5.8 years. So the reason radium-226 is favored is because it has the longest half-life, meaning that it stays radioactive for the longest amount of time. So um, this guy decays very, very, very quickly, which means it's constantly giving off radiation very quickly. And that makes this one the most dangerous out of all of them. I know the idea of radioactivity doesn't sound safe and staying radioactive for over a thousand years also sounds super dangerous. None of these things are necessarily safe. It's just that this is the safest because it gives off its radiation very slowly. Okay. So um, also the paint would stay um, glowing for the longest amount of time. Let's look at this next question. We have an equation here and it says germanium 81 and uranium 235 have different decay modes. I don't think this equation has anything to do with anything. Oh yes, it does because germanium's right there. Um, germanium 81 emits beta particles and has a half-life of 7.6 seconds. Oof, that's very dangerous. The shorter the half-life, the more dangerous it is because it's get rid of its, it's getting rid of its radiation so quickly. So it says determine the time required for a 16 gram sample of germanium to decay until only one gram of the sample remains unchanged. So our format for this always is stuff over time. And in this case, the stuff is not a fraction. The stuff is asking specifically for mass in grams. And we're going to put that over time stuff over time. So timer always starts at zero. And when the timer is at zero, it says we have 16 grams of germanium. So we're going to start with 16 right there. And then a half life is going to pass, which means for the case of germanium, 7.6 seconds is going to pass. So to jump from here to here is going to be 7.6 S for seconds. So after 7.6 seconds, the stuff gets cut in half because it's a half life. So 16 divided by 2 would give me 8 grams. That means 8 grams of my stuff is still radioactive. In another 7.6 seconds, it would be 15.2. Yep, 15.2. So after 15.2 seconds, just four grams of this stuff is going to be radioactive. Then we're going to add another 7.6. And now we are at 22.8. My stuff gets cut in half. So now we're down to two. Two grams are radioactive. And then another half-life will pass and we will be at, I have to write it sideways a little bit because I'm out of space here, but this is 30.4 seconds and only one gram of my stuff is going to be radioactive at that point. 
So determine the amount of time. That is 30.4 seconds. You with me? So this thing is really crazy dangerous because it is giving off so much radiation in such a short amount of time. So that makes this much more dangerous. Um, ba, 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 ba. That's another fraction question. I don't really want to do that. I would like to do a percent question. Maybe we can just change it. That's a fraction question. <laughs> okay, that's fine. We can do another fraction question. So here we go. Um, the diagram below shows the first three steps in the uranium-238 radioactive decay series. So this says uranium is going to turn into thorium, and then thorium is radioactive, so it needs to decay again. And then it turns into Pa, and I don't remember what the name of that is, but it turns into Pa, and then Pa is radioactive, and it needs to decay again, and then it turns into a different form of uranium. Notice this one is uranium-238, and this one is 234. Um, it says the decay mode for the first and third steps is shown above the arrows. The decay mode for the second step is not shown in the diagram, but thorium-234 has a half-life of 24.10 days. Determine the total time that must elapse until only one sixteenth of the original sample of uranium-234 remains unchanged. So we are starting with um, thorium. A lot of this information is not necessary to answer this question, honestly. But we're looking at thorium-234, and we are doing a fraction. That's how we're measuring our stuff. So we're doing um, fraction over time. And the timer always starts at zero. And we are starting with all of the thorium. So the fraction is 1 over 1. If you just wanted to write one, you could, that's fine. Now, the half-life for thorium-234, it tells us in this question is 24.10 days. If it didn't tell us, we could look it up here, possibly. No, we only have thorium-232, which is different from thorium-234, not the same thing. So because it's not on the reference table, they had to give us the information. So, um, this is telling us that after 24.10 days, half of our sample is going to be broken down. So we just add 24.10 for the time, and now we have half of our sample. Some kids like to do it um, one like chunk at a time. Some kids like to do all the fractions and then go through and do all the times. Whatever works for your brain is fine. Um, so now we're going to go another 24.10 days, which is going to give us 48.2 or 48.20. And at that point, we have half of our sample again. So half of a half is a quarter. Sometimes they ask for this as a percent, so this would have been 100%, then 50%, then 25%. And if you're not good at the math, just put it in a calculator. Just divide by 2 each time. So now we're going to go another 24.10 days because we are trying to get to 1 16th of the original sample. So after another 24.10, now my brain is starting to break. I need some calculator help. This is going to give me 72.3 days, and at that point, we will have one-eighth of our sample. And then after another 24.10, we are up to 96.4 days, and that is when we will have one-sixteenth of our original sample. And that's how you do half-lives. Um... There's something I wanted to add. Oh, just like a general formula. So here we go. General formula for half-lives is this. No matter what type of half-life question they give you, you can do it this way. You can do stuff over time. 
and your stuff is either going to be mass, fraction, they can do it as a percent, whatever. Um, I think mass and fraction are the most common. And then for each block, like from one thing to the next to the next, you just divide by two. You cut the sample in half every single time. And then for the bottom, you always start at zero every single time. And then for each jump, you are going to add the half-life. And again, the half-life, the amount of time is different for every single isotope. And we have a list of a bunch of them here. Um, I just want to run through. D stands for days. Y stands for years. MS stands for milliseconds. So calcium 37, like crazy, crazy, crazy fast. Uh, y is years. MIN is minutes. H is hours. <whistles> Times 10 to the fourth years is 1,000. No, 10,000 years the fifth to the tenth this is like billions of years i think that's 10 billion it's a lot um if any point you don't remember what these um units are they are on the front cover of the reference table seconds minutes hours days and years and then your scientific notation you should remember from um like middle school but that's that every radioisotope is different they have their own half-life and that is why you need a general formula like this where you add the half-life. I can't tell you a specific number because it's different for every radioisotope. So any questions, leave a comment. I will do my best to get back to you. That is all. Have a great day.